But you do believe there's a God? If you prove it, I mean with you. Well, nobody can prove it. So then you're then an atheist. Over. Yeah. Because you got arrested subsequently what, 130 times. 113 times, times yeah. yeah. Vokism, that's the dangerous part. انصاف دل نیست تنها سلامی تنها کلامی بی کس و کارم من پر دردم زیبا نگاهی If anyone want me to say one sentence about Baba Gemini He's, he's love and light mm. He is love and light Well, hi there. Welcome to episode 344 of Rook. I'm Gian Gomeshi. And a quick word to some fellow Iranians about an idea that is painfully true. Maybe we don't need a BMW. Oh, I know. Hang on. Slow down. Pick up your jaw off the ground. How dare I? Is this something I really want to say to cast aspersions on the beloved BMW? Actually, yes. Before we get the show started on this night, just a little word on the obsession with status, which in the case of diasporic Iranians seems disproportionately bound up in cars, fancy cars. This is our cultural tradition where elite Western vehicles become rolling symbols of achievement. Yeah, can we move past that? Maybe a little? Hey, do what you want to do, but we don't need a BMW or a Porsche or a Maserati. I'm not even going to get started on those of you who can afford a McLaren. You're a whole other brood and I am borderline Hasud. And so let's get some disclaimers out of the way. I am not judging you if you are really in love with your Beamer. I do not want you to lose friends by giving up your top class Benz. And I get that cars can inspire deep emotional connections. In the immortal words of the Zoroastrian musical genius Freddie Mercury, I'm in love with my car got a feel for my automobile, but it's the need that some have for the proverbial BMW or it's like that has me playing Counter-Strike. We don't need a BMW. Rather, is it possible that the obsession with owning lavish cars represents the absurdity of practicality sacrificed at the altar of image? How does this make any logical sense? Consider the glittering cities in which the Iranian diaspora has planted its roots. LA, Toronto, London, places where winding crowded streets and rising fuel costs are the order of the day. The realities of parking dilemmas, the demands of high performance engines, all surrendered for the devotion to a brand? Is the badge itself enough to justify this mismatch of form and function across the land? Think about it. It's one thing to take pride in one's success, but quite another to cloak it in symbols that may inadvertently reinforce stereotypes. In seeking status through these symbols, are we communicating success or merely a shallow need for affirmation? Oh, now I'm going to get the condemnation. I am no doubt being disowned by members of my extended family right now. Look, I love you. I love your love for your BMWs, but do you really need them? I have a friend who can barely make her rent at a bachelor apartment here in Toronto, but drives a Benz SUV. Why? Because she says it shows she is successful to a T, except it doesn't make any practical, cultural or economic sense. Mind you, as our friend Vahid Amin Mokadam of Cars I Have Driven tells me, it's not only Iranians, but a whole whack of other immigrants that are enamored of the luxury ride. It seems like it's an immigrant thing to attach vehicles to your pride. But is there anything really wrong with those of us who like driving our, I don't know, mini? I get it. People use luxury cars as investments. Some consider them valuables like jewelry, but it's ultimately about status and strut. The idea is that higher status confers a better kind of person from a prominent and prosperous family. Hell, some have explained that you are more marriable in Iran if you have a BMW or Benz. But what about the tendency to reduce ourselves to labels? Maybe the most profound cost is the reduction of self-worth to a luxury brand. As part of a resilient community, Iranian expats have achieved notable success in every field from science and business to the arts. But overemphasizing luxury cars as status symbols can overshadow this richer picture of achievement, reducing people's identity to what they drive instead of what they contribute. Maybe real status shouldn't rely on car logos, but on legacy, especially within the diaspora where cultural and community achievements are already so strong. You don't need a BMW. Take it from me. I drive a fancy new mini JCW, which is made by BMW. Shit. We all have a ways to go. 
All right, we have a brand new episode of Rook coming your way with our feature guest, Ardavona Hatsemi, in the Rook studio. Could you want anything more? This is episode 344. It's October 31st, 2024. This is Rook. Welcome to episode 344 of Rook. I am Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto. Hello to you from Canada. Salam Dustan Aziz. Durud Bashoma. Hope you are doing well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. Hi there, Smart Pega. Hello. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. For most people, Halloween was already three days ago when they're listening to this. Yeah. Unless they... <laughs> Listen to the podcast immediately. The yeah, because Halloween's in a few hours here in Toronto. And um, uh, are you excited about this? I am excited. I like handing out candy to kids. Do you dress up? Um, I have this like ghost necklace that lights up. That's, and not, that's not a costume. No, it's not. A, I didn't no. say I wear a costume. Right. I, you said do you, you dress wear a nice, up. You wear a nice wear necklace. Yeah. I see. Yeah. But we decorate the house. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Me too. I got the it's kids. I got the candy ready. I got the house decorated. Exactly. I'm, I'm ready. Um Sorry about the uh, essay because I think you do you, you have a BMW, don't do you? Not. What is it? I drive an Audi. Audi, yeah, fancy car, <laughs> fancy person, fancy car. Listen, the whole time that you were going through that essay, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, as soon as we end this, I'm gonna tell him that Mini's owned by BMW, <laughs> and yeah, then at is. the end, you did. Uh, yeah, I cop to it. Yeah. Not only that, but I did just get it. I mean, part of the impetus for this uh, was that I just switched my car to a, a, a newer, upgraded model, and upgraded and. And I hate the fact that it's made by BMW. <laughs> <laughs> it takes because so much. I can't virtue signal the, the same way. Yeah. yeah, I can't just be like "fuck you, BMW drivers." But, uh, exactly. but yeah, but you get the idea. I we shouldn't it. be slaves to status. We talk about this a lot in so many ways when it comes to Iranians. And so, it was time to do an essay about the BMW thing because I really think it's dumb. And I know that some people won't like that. I know that, in fact. Um, uh, Tina, the photo and video queen, uh, said, uh, who's sitting right over here, yeah. was like, I don't think you should do this essay because it's going to piss me. Do you drive a BMW? No. <laughs> All right. Because she was like really not happy with the essay. Super against it. So, but, you, you know, even in your essay, what you mentioned about it not just being Iranians and, and all immigrants, I think there is a deeper kind of meaning behind this. And it isn't just the stereotypical conversation that we have and all these things. I think, you know, in countries like Iran, for example, a lot of these cars are impossible for most people right, to get unless right. you're of a certain social they class. They are truly like aspirational. That. Exactly. Uh, and, and we discussed that. We had an episode, if you remember, called Persians and Cars mm -hmm. a, a couple of years ago. And that was one of the things we discussed. And one of the guests was this Vahid, I mean, I mean, Muqaddam, uh, who has a great site called uh, Cars I Have Driven. Mm -hmm. And he was he was talking about how this is a, a vestige of from the old country of yeah. true aspiration. The funny thing about that, though, I couldn't talk about everything in this essay, but is it isn't necessarily true for the new world. I yes, mean, it's not that's true. It, it isn't true that people here, uh, you know, say in Canada and the United States necessarily revere driving a, a BMW or, a, or mm -hmm. Benz. In fact, not that they don't like fancy cars here too, but you know, there's almost there's there's it's it's so different the the value of status mm -hmm. here. It's almost to be presenting yourself as modest, especially in Canada, is seen as a virtue. You know, yeah. it's like our greatest stars. You know, uh, Anne Murray, the singer, or Gord Downey, who used to be the singer of the Tragic Hip, will never dress up. You know, and we'll we'll drive modest little cars right. and we'll live in small houses. It's like the polar opposite of the Iranian thing. <laughs> what is that? Isn't there like a, a stat or something where the um, most, the Toyota Corolla or something is driven most by billionaires or something? Oh, like really? That? Yeah. There's a statistic. Because it's the smart purchase. Yeah. There's oh. a statistic or something where the most, the number of people who drive Corollas who are billionaires is like, well, listen, that's the thing. I mean, look, if you're if you're a, an extraordinarily wealthy person and you've worked hard and whatever, and we know some Iranians in mm -hmm. this city and you want to be a car collector, Good, good on you. Go ahead and, you know, that's your, your choice. That's your hobby. But when I was talking about that friend that I have, yeah. who it's a true story. I mean, who's a, you know, she has a very modest income, Iranian, but like feels the need. 
like <laughs> like undoubtedly the highest part of her monthly expenses, expenses is, her is, is her car lease or whatever yeah. that is. Um, Ardavona Hatami. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, we, he, so he's based in Berlin in Germany. He was here in Toronto for a couple of days. We did this interview yesterday, day before yesterday. And um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I know you've listened to it. I have. Uh, and uh, I'm so thrilled that we get to play this for people. I mean, he's a very interesting guy, very idiosyncratic guy, <laughs> as you heard in the interview. I did. I'm not going to lie. I had trouble keeping up with you guys at some point, <laughs> like when yeah. I was listening to this. But you was... know that Donald Trump talks about the weave? Yeah. He's like, it's like the weave. He's it's... going, he's tangential. He tells stories and goes in different places. Yeah. He, I should e- explain that he's a, a singer, guitarist, songwriter, um, and he he's the guy who, many Iranians will know from that moment in the uh, Women Life Freedom Uprising mm-hmm. where he had that song called Khodanur, beautiful yes. song. And he, he's got a beautiful voice. He's a he's a musician, but uh, he has more of a story too that um, um, that goes deeper than that. It inc- includes the fact that amongst other things, he was the first street musician mm-hmm. of his kind inside Iran. This is not that long ago. This is going back to when he was a teenager about 20 years ago, yeah. um, he starts playing the electric guitar and singing Pink Floyd songs in the streets of Tehran, which was not a thing mm-hmm. at that time, and subsequently gets arrested over 100 times. And uh, it's quite a story. has to flee to Turkey and then ends up on TV. I mean, he's got a... <laughs> so Erdemon uh joining us here, and also he's going to perform a couple of songs in the Rook Hub. I'm excited about that. Yeah, actually, it's funny that you mentioned that part when when you guys were talking about it. I couldn't believe how not that long ago it was. Like when when you were having that conversation, I was thinking in my head, I was like, oh, yeah, back then. And then I realized back then wasn't really that long ago. You mean about the street, the busking? Yeah. Well, yes, because now you see these videos of these like hipster kids exactly. performing in the street and you go, where is that, Istanbul? And it's like, no, no that's in Tabriz right, yeah. or something, you know, um, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a bit of a modifier on uh, Kaveh Yagmai who was here last week mm-hmm. or was it last week or a couple of weeks ago? Last, last week? week. Uh, <laughs> time flies when you're <laughs> driving fun. a BMW vehicle. <laughs> uh, um, you know, he was saying uh, as part of his conversation around nothing good happening in Iran for the last mm-hmm. 45 years. He was saying nothing's changed. You know, things are as bad as they have been. This is the kind of thing where you can't, you can still be extremely anti-regime and talk about the human rights abuses and atrocities and anti-democracy and all that, but kind of go, some things have changed. Yeah. Street performances were not happening after the 1979 revolution, you know, yeah. different kinds of street performances that were not <laughs> musical were happening. So, yeah, I mean, uh, but but that said, you know, uh, Adavon was basically chased out of the country and mm-hmm. certainly could not go back now. Yeah. Um, speaking of talking points, we, we before we get to Adavon and, and give you guys this, this interview, we had, you know, as part of our uh, truncated roundup mm-hmm. um, that we're going to do this week, you... There was a couple of things that we thought we would talk about. One of them was uh, th- that has to do with the Cyrus, the Cyrus Day, the Cyrus yeah, International Cyrus Day. The Great Day. Yeah, can you, what, tell tell me what's so October twenty eighth um, is known as Cyrus the Great Day, and it's a day to celebrate Cyrus the Great, of course, founder of the Achaemenid Empire, and to um, really talk about or reflect on you know his um, political philosophy of tolerance and respect and and just celebrate him. Now, of course, you would think that this would be celebrated in the the country in which he came from, Iran. But of course, proud, <laughs> proud that's uh, right. lineage that we have. Cyrus being our exactly yeah, great. But what I noticed um, this week actually was there were so many videos and so much talk on social media, and there was actually a couple of um, news outlets who also reported on this as well about how the Islamic Republic had set up blockades. Um, anywhere near historical sites in and around those days. So anything leading up to October 28th, and I think it's actually still kind of going on now as well, um, to try and prevent people from celebrating this. And, you know, I know this isn't news to many Iranians who have either lived there or have heard Mm. of this. I know this is not some shocker, but I just, you know, I really wanted to bring it up because it's something that I feel is important for us to reflect on and to know that, you know this kind of thing happens and we've become so it's become so normal yeah it's it's normalized for us and it really shouldn't be it's still crazy to me that this is okay (laughs) yeah yeah the dumb practices of a suppressed society uh, based on a totalitarian government yeah Yeah. 
That's um, yeah, horrible. Um, okay, and speaking of which, and, and on that yeah. note, um, I also thought, you know, again, I'm sure many Iranians have already heard the news, but un unfortunately, um, Jamshid Sharmat was executed on Monday. And for anyone who wasn't aware, um, he was the German Iranian dissident who was kidnapped back in 2020, I believe, in Dubai, on terrorism charges and corruption charges and all of these made up charges that we've always yeah. uh, heard about. And so unfortunately, he was executed on a resident day. of the United States. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there was so much contro controversy about, you know, what even happened in Dubai. And, and I know his daughter was very outspoken on, on the circumstances, but um, unfortunately he was... Executed. His daughter was very outspoken. Um, and and she, she, she wasn't, hasn't been on this show, no. but I've seen her, we've seen mm -hmm. her in media, and she's very well-spoken as well as outspoken. Um, and it, it really underscored, you know, we've learned this lesson a million times, Nabi Dafkhari, a mm -hmm. bunch of others, you know, that... that no matter what the world says, maybe it's sometimes in in spite of uh, intentionally that the the regime will do what it does to um, make sure its iron fist credentials are mm -hmm. are intact. And so I I thought, well, you know, there's been so much talk about this particular man, Jamshid, that they wouldn't, they're not going to go ahead with the execution because yeah. it would be bad PR. Stupid me. What the fuck that they care about PR? You know, we we've learned this, but um, that's part of the heartbreaking reality. Yeah, and you know, on, on, I actually think similarly, and and there's been so many situations that I've thought the same thing, and in this specific instance, you know, I kept on thinking about um, the Iran Germany connection and how there had been some conversations with I think the foreign secretary of. Germany who had spoken to some official in Iran about this and about how there were um, officials in the consulate and all these kind of all of this back and forth and I thought okay surely after that they're not going to execute him and yeah. of course we saw on Monday that they did all right plus ça change plus à la même, plus à la même chose mm -hmm. the more things change that's right the more they stay the same um Pega June, happy Halloween to you. <laughs> happy Halloween Happy to fancy you. car to you. <laughs> Likewise. Actually, I didn't know you got a new car. Mubarak. Yeah, well, thanks. There you go. I mean, it's, uh, I'm still on brand. Yes. It's, I think still it's like my, my 11th Mini. Wow. A British automobile made by Germans. Germans. Yes. <laughs> In Canada. Uh, uh, all right. Let's get to our feature guests. Here we go. <laughs> All right, our featured guest today is an Iranian singer, guitarist, songwriter who has captured the hearts of Iranians around the world with his beautiful voice and recordings. He was also the first street musician of his kind after the revolution in Tehran, getting arrested 130 times for it before he finally fled from Iran around a decade ago. But he is perhaps best known these days for his song that was recorded with Babak Amini at the height of the uprising after the killing of Massa Amini. Take a listen to this. خدا نور است خدا محساس خدا سلطان قلب نیکاست خدا تو کوچه ها امروز شهامت در وجود ماست خدا تو ماج خدا ساله خدا امروز دو تا باله که باید برکشید با اون وگرنه مسیحت داره خدا زلفای در باده خدا ایران آباده خداوند گوهر عشقیست که تا مرگ پای ستاره خدا از ما خدا با ما خدا November of 2022 taste of the song Khuda Noor. That song that went viral and that is the voice and vibrations of our feature guest today, Ardavon Hatami. He's a young guy but he's lived a lifetime with his startling journey from Iran, the streets of Iran, to Turkey, to Germany, to here in Toronto. Ardavon has been in Germany in recent years and in recent days in Toronto and we're very lucky to have him here. Ardavon Hatami joins me in the Rook studio today. Hello sir. Hey, I first of all I say hi to your it's like 
anyone who is watching us or hearing us both, I guess yes. yeah both yeah I was ha- s- I say hi and actually my pleasure it's mm-hmm. my luck to be here actually today but it's our um, it's our great fortune I've been lo- uh, looking great. forward to having you here Merci Kilmadi thanks that song yeah, for, for uh, I mean it takes me back inviting me <laughs> sorry <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> uh, um it, it, it that song takes me back to um it's a it's an emotional moment it's that that in fact that song i remember that was the apex that was the height yeah. of the uprising november 2022 that was the big demonstration in berlin that was all that was going on what what do you think of when you hear that now yourself uh it yeah it reminds me of those days like we were i was not sleeping i was really i was just sleeping like two hours i couldn't even i was just checking the news i was afraid for my family for my friend for everyone all people in europe it was very complicated it wasn't the first time we know like uh the green revolution also i was in middle of it also i got injured a lot there so police actually attacked me that day and um uh, yeah so uh, some uh, there was i guess i how can i say that i was uh, uh, remembering the situation that i had in that time like the green revolution s- situation in that time the and green movement yeah, the Sadly, movement, it wasn't a revolution yeah. in the end. But uh. I mean, it, I would say revolution because it changed a lot also. Mm. Like people start to understand a lot. So it, before that, it was a little bit unclear for some people that which situation it is or where we are going. So it was actually by revolution, but inside people's brain. Mm. So yeah, not, not in this. Yeah. It didn't happen, unfortunately. There, did, Adam, there's so much going on in that song. Uh, I mean, you've written many songs since then, and you're, uh, I don't want to only focus yeah. on, on the, the one that, that, that sort of viral one, but, but just to stick with it for a second, there's there, the names of the kids, the names of the people that were yeah. killed, um, the, the sound of the timbre of your voice, that moment, you, Bob Ack, um, this cross, this international effort to do this song and, and something that was kind of like another battle, yeah, the, the song that a lot of people yeah. became familiar with at that time. Where did the, the poetry of the song come from? Um, I was actually, if you check it, also Neda is there. Mm. When uh, Neda gets Navid Afkari is also there. Yeah, also. Yeah. Uh, the, but I will talk about Navid as well. Okay. But when Neda got killed, actually, I was not really far from that. Wow. It was really not. Uh, that's I, in I hash didn't to, hash see to the hash. That's in the Green Movement. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I said, like, because half of me was. Uh, there in that time because I was in the street myself and try uh, to change something which it didn't but half of me was for, uh, in that moment in that time so it was like very complicated situation for me I was not sleeping and I felt I should do something I should do some I was just stuck uh, with my feeling I mm. wanted to just re- get really but I couldn't I couldn't do anything it was like uh, I had to, I uh, sorry for my English. What is both like? You cannot cry. Just mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how how we say it? I, would, I don't know in English. I not learn English right now. No no no. You're, you're I, fine. You're fine. Anyway, anyway we I had both. Yeah. Let's I guess Iranian mm-hmm. or let, you can translate it to a friend next to you. So, um, uh, but I wanted to just both. Re- bo, oh, you were choking up. Ah uh, uh, yeah, choking well, up. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. Both. Um, so I couldn't make it. So I start to write something. After Khodanur uh, died, mm. I was seeing that picture that they were just they arrested him and he was like with a handcuff to that yeah. uh, the pipe somewhere. And I was super sad. It was like super touchy at the moment. I'm Iran and it was really hurtful. So. And someone called me, a friend, and he said, why Khuda is not doing anything for us? God mm. is not doing anything for us. And then I was just uh, thinking about it. And as I started to write, and then when the, uh, we, like after we talk, I was just writing some, I r- just read Khuda, and I was thinking Khuda is God in Persian. It was like Khuda, 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 Nurast. And then 
I was just thinking I'm an agnostic person, so I'm agnostic. Agnostic. You agnostic. don't believe in you don't you don't believe unless you prove something. Uh -huh. Wait, wait a second. Agnostic prove. meaning you don't subscribe to a religion, mm -hmm. but you do believe there's a God. If you prove it, I mean with you. Well, nobody can prove it. So then you're then an atheist. Over. Yeah, you're an atheist. We can no end the year, but maybe someone suddenly opened the sky and said, "I'm God." In that moment, I would say, okay, I see uh -huh. some, I will say, I see something. Do you believe in <laughs> spirituality? Do you I believe was, there's something uh, that... Ah, uh, only thing I believe uh -huh. is there is something. There is something. Nothing else. There's some coincidences that cannot be explained. Yeah, there is something. But it's not an old man with a beard and a stick in exactly, the sky. Exactly, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, I, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. The, I'm out of that scenario. Oh, I yeah. was, I was, I was even living with some shamans in the desert. But oh. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were religious before. Uh, I mean, you, you grew up. Was your family religious? Uh, yeah, they are. They still are. I guess nobody is <laughs> <laughs> in Iran right now. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They may, I mean, they are, but not much left. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Because thanks to Islamic Republic, to mm. tell, show the truth. Uh, but l let me finish. Sorry, please. No, no, no. Yeah. Thanks, actually. Mm. Uh, but we can go there. Uh, and then I start to write Khoda Noor, and then I'm, I was like, damn it. They were, I do not have God in my heart today because I'm, I'm no, I know where, where we are. And we, I mean, I don't know where we are, but at the moment, I know there mm. is not. If we go, just check the history. Mm. If God wanted to help this poor kids, would do it like thousand thousand years ago yeah. either so and then i so and then i was thinking hmm there, there is no like this doesn't work and then i wrote like khuda nuras and then i was like mm, no khuda masast hmm. and then i wrote khuda and I, it was in my brain i was like no khuda masast and then i remember nikai uh sultan Galbha, like the king of hearts from Arif and she was singing it. There was a short yeah, video, yeah, yeah. and then I said, "Khuda Sultan Galbni cast." And then I wrote "Khuda," and then in the alleys, and then it started. So, but I was Sultan Galbni. I wrote it like like few. Uh, By the way, you were in Germany at the time, right? You exactly. I was in my uh, apartment in, in Berlin. Berlin yeah. yeah, and I sat in was a stock. I couldn't write anymore. Um, I don't know what was the problem, but because I, w I had lots of pain in that moment, mm. I couldn't do it. So I just took the camera. I have also good camera. I put it on and I just said, guys, I wrote this until here, but I feel not good. Help me. Anyone, any you said to you the have, internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah to internet yeah. in my Instagram. I said, if you have any idea who, which name, or if you can just write one part mm. of it, just do it and share it with me. Man, I got, I don't know, I got like more than, more than 100,000 messages. 100,000? No, I don't know. I did, I, some of them are not, uh, I couldn't open it. They are wow. like a lot. I didn't, uh -huh. people were like just sending me this, this person, this person, and just phrases mm -hmm. and a lot. It took, uh, I didn't, you, like believe me for two nights I didn't sleep I didn't even wink I was just opening mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. uh, the part which could work and whatever and then uh, like a pu puzzle but they were not really correct with the rhythm and this kind of thing so I was taking the like me sometimes the right. meaning they wanted to transfer it's, or it's quite names. beautiful knowing that the song would then go on to be to go viral that it was it was constructed on Written. the shoulders of all these people, yeah, right? It was, like you, it was a group. It took, it took a village. Exactly. It took a vill but there's also a beautiful part of the story where you you didn't know Babak Amini, right? Many of us here know. I mean, you guys weren't friends, were uh, you? You sent him this song and uh, this poem and said, "Can I? Can you want to do this with me?" And he just responded. The I played the, the I I play guitar as well, and uh, you play guitar very well, actually. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, when you say Baba Kamini, I know, I'm but not no, for most people, <laughs> you, you're an amazing guitarist. Thanks, yeah. thanks. So I was like, he liked it to the like the way I play. I play like Turkish 
flamenco poppy that kind of mix yeah. because i was pa passing those countries on my way so i got the taste of it so and they, he just won uh, night uh i just opened my instagram like all the instagram addicts i opened my instagram to see who, uh, who, who wrote me or something and whatever and yeah, i have seen like bob i can read this mm -hmm. like no that's a joke <laughs> i just opened it it was his voice and he said i don't want june he told like i, I guess he, <laughs> you you got the voice message for him i don't want june i uh, check your uh, instagram and you're good i like wh uh, what you're doing and i support you as always if you want if anyone want me to say one sentence about Bob Gemini, he's he's love and light mm. He is love and light. Always, I would say. Khuda Noor. He is. Mm. He is the main one, actually, in, in my life. So he just wrote me that. I was like, and then a few months after this story, this movement started. So I wrote this, and I was, I started to, I wrote the music, I made it, and I was just playing. I found that, like, this lyric is bigger than me right now. Mm. Because, as you said, <clears throat> everyone, like all Iranian... Were you surprised by how, by the virality? Yeah. I mean, it's mil mil millions of plays. Yeah, it, it has, was right? a, a lot, a lot, actually. And it so. kind of, I mean, I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of puts you on the map, right? In terms yeah, of, yeah. there was a whole audience that didn't Bef know you before that. Before that, yeah, they knew it. Because I wrote song, I made this song, it's funny, one night I was drinking grappa oh. which is uh, taste like arak mm -hmm. people uh, arak oh, sorry arak is like uh, the, the taste was like arak and uh, arak is the turkish version uh, right? yeah, yeah yeah because i was living there so how I, dare you yeah yeah i'm <laughs> turkish believe me and it was a <laughs> kind of i have <laughs> i was i yeah. learned to speak turkish also i was living there so um, and then I started, I was drinking, and then I remember my father is from north of, north of Iran, so I remember uh, a song from, um, I guess, you know, Mirza Kuchek Khan is a song. I mean, I'm not with a guy. I, that's the f funny part. People thought I'm lefty because of Mirza Kuchek Khan history. But my grandpapa, I remember once I was in his car, and he just put it on, and he liked it. I, he liked some... Um, uh, no, no, Shomali music, northern, uh, northern uh, uh, singer, and w w like one of them was this Pureza, Pureza. I remember. What are you talking about? You like Donald Trump? You weave sorry, away yeah, yeah. and then come are back you to the actually interview. Him, <laughs> sorry, so you you know <laughs> this kind of people? <laughs> you just have black Trump, hair. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will just. Next uh, what are we? Where did we go now? We went to I northern. Will, okay, you're bringing it back. I will okay, do it. Okay, okay, okay I will good. just make it faster then. So uh, I was listening to that, and then I was, and I was super drunk. I started to play it, and if, uh, my grandpapa was in my uh, Iran. I miss Iran, so I was just playing Mirza Kuchek Khan. I was, and then it was funny. I po posted, and I was really drunk, man. I just, I slept. Mm. In the morning, I wanted to open my Instagram. Oh dear, never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they, I, I guess. Yeah. I'm not Muslim. Take the take the <laughs> iPhone away when when uh, you've been drinking. But exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I posted, and in the morning I wanted to open my Instagram, but it was jumping out, and I thought, hey, what, what's wrong? And I tried to go in, and it was just jumping out. And I was like I thought someone hacked it or something. But after a while, I opened it, and I found out there are lots of people writing me. And I was <laughs> like, why? So uh, it was because Gulshif the Farahani. Ah, yes. She liked it, and yes. she posted with some other artists. Like Is Reza. that the Gulshif the story? That's not the Gulshif the story, is there? You're, I've, I've yeah. been warned to to yeah. ask you or not ask you about the gold shift that story. I don't know if it's a is there. A, a, I can answer. I guess 
It depends what, what the question is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the question is, what is the gold shifter story? <laughs> oh, there, yeah. With, yeah. Like, yeah with, which, yes, with you. You're exactly, the interview exactly. subject right now. So, yeah, that was the deal. That's the scenario. I, I posted that and Gully suddenly liked it. And then she. And you made don't know, story. you didn't know her. Did I didn't know her. In the All night. of these people, gold shifter, uh, Bob Academy, they find you and they want to they, uh, celebrate they, you. That's not so uh, bad. Is, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Is that, like, has that happened a lot in your? life where famous yeah. people discover you yeah like Reza Sadiqi oh Reza yeah, Sadiqi he is well. lovely he is, he is also like his brother he is I love him mm. Reza Sadiqi as well and yeah he just because of Mirza Kuchekhan also he wrote me the also the, so actually I kind of started with Mirza Kuchekhan it was okay. funny it was funny when I put it there and in my Instagram by chance I saw Berabar have seen it Sober put it on like uh, on his uh, story and then Guli have seen it and then others have seen it uh, it wasn't the first time because this was the answer to the question about Khoda Noor, by the way. Yeah. I just for the yeah, reminding, yeah, reminding the audience. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank God it's not a live show on so network what, what, TV. Okay. We would have to get to the commercial. Guys, yeah. you know what? Before <laughs> Khoda Noor, also I had a virus on. <laughs> I finished it. <laughs> so that was the scenario. I, I, I kid you. I, I'm yeah, actually thanks. enjoying hearing these thanks things. Lot, that yeah, you're, yeah. We've learned a lot. We, you yeah. may be an atheist. Although you claim that uh, you I said agnostic, agnostic I'm not agnostic. sure. Maybe uh, the guy with beard once come. Maybe oh, uh, yeah. you, don't, you don't want to eliminate the option. Exactly, it might be there. If you open the door, I'm in. Then. Uh -huh. yeah. So maybe are you saying that if you were to, real question here, if you're in a dire situation like you, your life is at risk. You're in, in a moment. There's a something coming towards you, and you know, you do you pray to God? Do you no, go, hey, was, God, help me? I would sing. Song like yeah. Mama, ooh, yeah, ooh, you would sing. Ooh, I would sing Queen, yeah. <laughs> you would sing Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't want to die sometimes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, never been born at all. Well, I would just I'm not sure that would help you, but uh, <laughs> unless there's a bunch of Queen fans around who would come and yeah. interfere. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you, you, you know, I love, I, I'm so curious about your story because when I f find out, first of all, I love your voice. You have, Thanks, a, you have a beautiful you really have a beautiful voice really uh, like. one doesn't look at you and think that you have a beautiful voice but then yeah. surprisingly there it is what, what job I would have <laughs> no I would, yeah, I would I'm interested I want to know I kid you I kid well, you you, I, I want. you have a beautiful face too but wait 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 for it okay uh -huh. if you would see me in the street yes and someone would say what's his job mm. what would he say what job? Well, well, it depends on with the sideburns. Yeah. With with the sideburns, it eliminates a lot of jobs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I will be a lawyer, for example. Well, you uh, could be a lawyer, but yeah, a, a very uh, interesting cool lawyer. Cool one, right? Yeah, very cool lawyer. I, I'd say you know you're you're like a graphic designer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. How's that? Uh, I I don't like it. I <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah. you don't like the, all the graphic designers at home no, no, are, are I like very unhappy. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really. You don't think of yourself. As yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't uh, go. I mean, I didn't go that way. But you're very clean cut. You've got a nice shirt on, and you just, yeah. it's just the cool. the sideburns are the only. Uh, but you have this beautiful. You mean artist doesn't have it. <laughs> No, so, I want to know what you judge artists right now. I want to know that. Uh, what, what what do you <laughs> okay. want to know? Yeah, you yeah. you know you you have a beautiful voice. Um, and you play well. I, what what I don't what I didn't know about your story is this background of the street musician thing, which I which I quite love. Um, you're a kid. Uh, first of all, you're a kid in Tehran who. Um, what is it? You're at your uncle's wedding or something, and you you yeah. start to uh, fall in love with the idea of becoming a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't come from a very well off family, right? Oh uh, no. You, we have. I there is no any other musician in my family. And but also your family is not a rich family. No. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, we were going to kind of make it, but you know, Iran and scenario right. sanctions and whatever. My right. Father lost a lot. But you weren't from a family where they discouraged you, where they said don't become a musician. I mean, you didn't have to follow well, it. Not really, but uh, yeah, there were like some a few moments I have in, in my mind, but they were tired they, when they were at home, they were working a lot. Mm. And my mother and my father, and my father as well. So yeah, I was kind of uh, feel limited to practice. That was the problem. I was actually practicing somewhere like in the street, in Lale Park, Park Lale, let's say, in the street, like somewhere in the corner, because I couldn't but really practice at home. First of all, I, the, the, isn't, isn't there a Metallica tape that 
yeah, you find yeah, you, you find a tape of Metallica. It, Good that you remember. Well, I remember line. because that's yeah. quite a that, that's an an interesting. First of all, I mean, you, you randomly are, yeah. in in Tehran in the 1990s or whatever, or two, two, early 2000s, you yeah, run yeah. into a Metallica tape. I find that interesting enough. Exactly, that uh, was a deal. Exactly. And but I don't listen to your music and necessarily think Metallica, but they inspired you. But I play all of their songs actually. I Do can, you? I can. Yeah, uh, I was. But I'm. Uh, but I'm as a street musician, fun. you started playing Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, yeah. yes. But it's funny. One day I was just walking in the street, even, and then I found a pink tape, cassette tape. Yeah, it's just there was nothing written on it, nothing. Just it was a pink tape, and I went home, and I put it in the like uh, the like the uh, as a cassette player. Yeah. And uh, boombox, ghetto blast. It was yeah. nothing else matters. It's the first song I have heard actually from Metallica. It was nothing else matters. It was just the beginning of it, and then I was like. And you didn't know Metallica Dude, at the what? time. No, you were, my the, family the world were opened listening. up to you. Yeah, yeah. My family were listening to music, but the music they were listening, I was okay, kind of, but to listen to them, but they were not my favorite. Always, I was actually looking for something. Mm. The only music that I liked from the music that my family were listening was Sea of Hashem's, actually. It was like the guy was interesting. Like the, he had a, uh, he has a song which is Sahne. I liked the, it. Was modern and I liked it, but I didn't have any idea. What about Farah Mars? You said Farah Mars did your family encouraged me. Oh, that's a different oh. scenario because after I found him myself, oh, you my actually, family were not listening to Farah Mars. I found him myself. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That so uh, I should explain for especially for non-Iranians. Uh, after the revolution, well, in the first years after the revolution, there's no music anywhere. Not, everything's not allowed. There's no guitar amps, nothing here. Uh, but there's also, because now uh, there's videos that you see of street musicians in Tehran, you know, singing and playing. This was not the case 20 years ago, no, right? It, it just, you, uh, in fact, you would, it would be a shock to see somebody doing this. But you as a teenager, decide that you're going to start yeah. playing Pink Floyd songs and singing on the streets of Tehran. I know how big a deal this is because you got arrested subsequently well, 130 times. 113 times, yeah. Yeah, so 13 or 30? 13. Oh, yeah. so much less than I thought. 130 is nothing. I thought Shall it was 130. Shall I go back to Iran? <laughs> <laughs> Get arrested again. I mean, they would kill me right so now. So first of all, I'm, I'm curious about the 14-year-old kid that says, fuck it, I'm going to play, yeah. I'm going to sing and play in the street even though, and what the initial reaction you got was. Um, it was crazy. It was like the first time I played in this street. I let me tell you, it was funny because I wanted to go and play on this stage. I went to get permission. They didn't give it. It was their fault. <laughs> they, man, dude, I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Believe me. <laughs> like sometimes I, I'm thinking, why I'm not afraid of some dangerous right, stuff. Right. Yeah. So I was like, I went there. Uh, they didn't give me permission. I just came out and I was just... You're like, a teenager. Yeah, I was like 16, uh, 16 years old. Okay. I came out, I said, like to the friends, like, why we are asking these people to give us permission to mm. just play what? Like, why? And nobody even knows us. Even if we want to release song, we can't know. We have no even money. Why we want to do that? Let's just play it here. In the, and they say, where we can play then? I say, like, here. We want to play for people and was in Valia uh, Street, uh, Pahlavi Street. I love it. That time. So I was like, just say, we were here. It's like, just play it. People are passing by. Let's play. So actually, they didn't. They were shy and they were like, so I say, you know what? I play. So I was not actually the first musician in this street, but I was one of the first. But the difference is I was playing with electric guitar wow. for the first time in this street. Okay. Because it's... Uh, you, you set up an amp and plugged in and... Yeah, and the, that was like devil's instrument. <laughs> yes. Really, it is. Yes. It, it was a serious scenario. And then I started to play. I, I couldn't count. Even I couldn't see how many people are around me. It was like... Really, like a lot of people suddenly stopped and they gave me a lot of money. I was like, 
dude. I had like I lost some <laughs> I money. I like the there. story like, ends with you making a lot of money. Yeah, so, I, was well, like, I mean, were, were people? I'm capitalism fan, <laughs> yes, so right. I had a lot of money. I was like, oh, look at me, <laughs> such a rich do guy. You rem- do you remember what you were playing the first time? I was playing uh, Farhad. I was okay. playing Farhad as Manfred and Furughi, just like that. And then after, I, because and I was playing Wish You Were Here. Right. Like the only Pink Floyd, Floyd yeah. song and I could play, I was Wish You Were Here. So you're a 16 year old, Does that, nobody comes and stops you at that point. Nobody no, says. They arrested me on that The day. first day? Yeah. Oh my they God. They arrested me because there were lots of people. <laughs> they couldn't even understand why all the, because in Iran, before back then when i was kid when there were a lot of people what this kind of uh, we call them aliyallahi people or whatever they were just like putting chain on and then try to break it and so on so right. normally it's like uh, this kind of uh, thing they would just uh, think and um, normally you would expect that someone is doing that also that is not legal to do it in the uh, in middle of city so probably police wanted to see who is in the middle and then they came in the middle <laughs> <laughs> I've seen me with the long hair. I was like, I had the long hair. So, like, um, painting brush. I was like really <laughs> tiny. <laughs> with Skinny the, with the long hair. Exactly. Yeah. And then I had black nail polish. Like, <laughs> it was just, man, I was the wrong person here. I yeah. guess, it wasn't long. that long ago, by the uh, way. It really, it's really. It's t- 2005, 2004, yeah, yeah. right? So nobody, not... yeah, nobody could actually believe so so we're we're but laughing we're, we're laughing but 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 uh where'd you get the nail polish my uh, mother mother uh, that's very, uh, very very supportive mother metal, here yeah. honey no, take no, this no, no. i mean you she, stole it from her yeah yeah, yeah she yeah. didn't know what, uh, like, uh, what but, um you know. i mean we're joking about this but it must have been the first time you got arrested yeah, it's yeah probably yeah, it was. quite terrifying right very badly actually it took me really like to offer because i was a kid i mean I don't care. I, it, it didn't hurt me because it made me even stronger. I mean, until the day before I live here, I was just playing in the street. So, but uh, they arrested me, and then and then you they, just kept going back out in the street and playing. Yeah, they, I mean, 113 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're getting arrested every few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was exactly like that. So I was just playing in this. So they got me, and then they even took my guitar. They didn't give it to me, and I had another guitar. Uh, which was really bad guitar. So I went, I said, you cannot uh, stop me. You cannot uh, stop me. Because they are, so I was, uh, the, not the jail, like we say, Bozdoshka, I don't know what would life was a different, like kind of jail. Anyway, mm. they arrested me, they caught me in the police office somewhere. But for two nights I was there and they didn't give me my, my guitar. I, I got it, but in few weeks after that. So I went and I took another guitar. There was a really bad one. I said, yeah, well, I will just play, but I will. How play. soon after you get released the first time do you go back on the street? Uh, but the first time was two days, but I was there. So like for two weeks I was, like one week or one night and or they were, uh, and was and nobody around you? I mean, you're, uh, I mean, you're not super young, but a 16 year old. Was nobody around you, like your, I don't know, parents or your friends? Going, yeah, oh, yeah. stop doing this. Don't you know? Yeah, they get yeah. mm, you know enough. Yeah, yeah. But they, you wouldn't listen. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, even now. I don't. I don't. If I think it, I'm doing something great, I do it. I don't want. Uh-huh. I mean, I love. I mean, some people are afraid of making mistake. You but like I, making mistakes. I learn from it. Yes. What can I do? I but you didn't think you were making a mistake. Me. You, you. This no. was like a, a human rights issue, almost. I guess, right? Exactly, because uh, we, you, even now we are, uh, we are uh, like people cannot see instrument in the television. It's not allowed. And so uh, crazy. yeah, so crazy. But I brought it in the street. First day I played in the street, there was no guitar. There was no guitar in the street. But people right maybe you do not remember me but actually right now you see guitars and i'm happy for it you don't need to remember me even that happened that uh, what i wanted you were happened. literally the first person to do that With as far le- as you know yeah i didn't see anyone before me and i mean when you get arrested that many times yeah. like by like ba- as a beggars as a even the, like all kinds of different noise, reasons yeah, there yeah, yeah. Yeah. but by like time 87 or something like <laughs> i mean you, it must start becoming a a bit of a comedy right like you, you yeah. got to know the i'm sure you knew the police at some point you you probably yeah. knew the jail cell or something exactly right? there was there was a time that they didn't arrest me anymore why i was paying them i was keep buying them literally so the police officers and they knew me because they were arresting me a lot. So 
uh, they gave up. They couldn't stop me. They found out because I went and I checked the laws like a big book to find out if there is any law against that. And I didn't find anything. And I said, you know what? There is no even law against this. I can't play music here. And but like in Islam, because the, the law of uh, Iran is Sharia, it's yes. not the law. Yes. law like, yeah. So and then they couldn't stop me. So finally, I made a deal with them, and I said, "Yeah, okay, I give you this money at one time." The first time, I was just kind of afraid, but I say, yeah, "You know what? I have like the, I earned this money. Do you want some of it?" And then he just said, "Yes," and I said, "Oh, okay, I found a way." <laughs> <laughs> Buying off the police. Exactly, I yeah. bought police. Don't try this at home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not, uh, not now, at least. I mean, be, because partly, first of all, two steps back. At this point, I mean, with that kind of dedication, mm -hmm. I'm guessing it was clear to you that this is what you wanted to do in your life. You want to be an artist. You want to be a musician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you weren't um, simultaneously going to engineering school or something, were you? I no. was metal, this is your metal thing. fan. You You're know? a metal fan. Yeah, yeah. metal fan. The pink like, tape. Exactly. Yeah. Like eating raw meat to show that I'm a metal <laughs> But I'm a very metal person. So, of course, he had the character would to go to that direction. Right. right. But it obviously gets bad enough that by by the time you're in your early 20s, you you do feel like you have to leave Iran. You end up, I mean, I guess out of fear of, 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 of the fact that you keep getting detained, you keep pushing it, you keep pushing it, you keep pushing it. Um, you flee to eventually to Turkey, yes? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was not afraid of the scenario, but I didn't want to end it to the jail because the problem was the last time they got me, unfortunately, in I, do you know about Namaz Jome? Like they go they, yes. every Friday, Friday morning they, prayers, yeah, they yeah. prayer. They went there and then the Imam, the Jannati, like I don't want to say bad words, but I have. I hope you have it too in your mind right now. So he, the guy said like, yeah, well, the people are playing, dancing in the street. What's going on? And they just kind of, I didn't know it. I didn't even see it. But the day after I was in the street, suddenly, like, there was a lot of police. Cracked out. Right. Yeah, very, very weird. That was a really weird one because they didn't come just with the helicopter. So it's suddenly, I'm kidding, but there were lots of police suddenly for one guy who is playing, actually with another friend who was playing violin. So they got me and we went there. And um, there was another time after this, oh, that was really, they, they start to act really bad hmm. from that time. They got crazy. We call them Kharma So they got, <laughs> they got crazy suddenly. I don't know. They, yeah, so um, I felt that it's dangerous. So until I went to the judge, and the judge, uh, it was funny. There was like this much paper in front of him, but before I enter, the guy said, okay, okay, bring the, uh, the next one in. I went in, and then he he was from Tabriz, I guess, but he has just a Turkish accent. He has something, he was uh, yeah, a funny guy, kind of. But anyway, so he was just uh, looking at the papers he had in front of him, and then, he just uh, turned his head up and he was looking at me. He said, like, turned to the soldier and said, Is it the guy? He couldn't believe it. Like, he said. Meaning you were notorious? They, no, they I wasn't they, like they, a they, tiny kid with uh, long oh, hair. Oh, I see. I see. Like, right, right. really, like, I was. Uh, just you could see my side beer right. I guess was more the nefarious Adam yeah. it's this little guy it's yeah, this little yeah, was kid, it yeah. really and he was just saying like seriously is it this <laughs> guy why right. and then he just said how do you manage it why when we call to anyone we arrest anyone it like they say you told him mm. them to play how that can be possible so what was the reason the reason was I was Buying all the police officers and all the but, people. But, but the judge actually, the Tabrizi judge with his accent. Yes, uh, he was Tabrizi. He actually asks a legitimate question, um, which is, uh, I mean, not in the court of legitimate uh, Sharia, but, but as a question to you, what is it about you that would lead you to do something that millions of other sane people oh, will not risk themselves to do? Uh, some people are crazy. Do you really think you're crazy? I do. You don't seem crazy. Well, I am. You're really crazy? Yeah. 
<laughs> I felt so Meaning sometimes. you're like unstable? Uh, no, I'm just crazy. <laughs> Not really. What, I don't want to say What does crazy like, mean to you? Uh, um, I don't know. I just, I do big risks. Uh. Yeah. Well, then you're not crazy. You're a risk taker. You're adventurous. No, I'm crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I would say that. What's an example? Of, what's another I, example of a crazy thing you've done? I was uh, sleeping in this street in Turkey for twenty uh, one day without food, without anything. Yeah, I, I was just went get to there. That. Yeah, in winter. Still, I just still don't know if that's crazy. That's a. But that's, I knew I will end it there, and I didn't care. I was even not sad. I was. I would just say I will just go and make it. But I'm not sure you would die. You go to, you end up going to Turkey. Just yeah. catch people up. I, I think you tell me if this is the right story. This yeah. is what I, I, you go to Turkey. Finally, you flee there. You don't. You have no money, yeah. right? You land in Nothing. Istanbul with, and yeah. you don't speak Turkish either. By the Nothing. way, Nothing. No language. Or English. I guess it's a, would you do that? Would you be crazy enough to do that? To just go somewhere without knowing any languages, nothing, first time, no, enter, no, I in probably, winter, yeah. no, I mean, I'm attracted, I'm, as a journalist, I, I go to places yeah, yeah. where the fire is happening, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I have my uh, version of that, but I wouldn't go and sleep on the streets for, yeah. for two weeks. I couldn't even sleep on Kamis Hosseini's couch for yeah. two days without being pissed <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> um, but but uh, but but the, I mean that's that's a, another story. Yeah. So you go to you go to Turkey. Yeah. You sleep on the. What does it mean to sleep on the streets? Are you well, literally lying on the street? Thing. Yeah. Like it's the it's Street or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lying in the corner, actually, somewhere in the next to the. Pol uh, I found police office, and then I, with the rope, I just put all my instrument around me to just not. And you were also playing? Yeah, yeah. And th th I mean, this is where, you know, in the beginning I said you're a young guy, but you're, you have this incredible journey. Your story is a bit like a, I mean, there's got to be a movie. There's, at some point, uh. there's got to be a movie. <laughs> First of all, the street musician and then, and, the, and you know, all of what you've just explained, the Metallica tape, the Tabrizi Judge, whatever. Mm. But then when you get to Turkey and you're sleeping on the streets, yeah. suddenly you become a... <laughs> TV. A TV presenter in exactly, Turkey. Exactly. Yeah, I was. Uh, so, uh, how does that happen? Let's go to the Tabrizi guy. How, the how judge. I, yeah. Okay. Because it all happened from because of that day. Okay. Because the guy said, "How? Why we we arrest anyone?" They said, "Like you told them to play there. Why?" So the deal was, I tell you now, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Judge, the deal was your. Uh, I like office. how you're looking at yeah, into the like camera. I'm talking with he him. may not be watching, yeah. but yeah, go ahead. He will, I'm sure, one day, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure this this <laughs> it's gonna be one. Oh, right, Tabrizi it? judge. Yeah, oh, don't go. Yeah, yeah. No, I love Tabrizi and friend. It doesn't mean that he was also a good guy because I tell. But he, I didn't tell him the reason. But I wanted to be honest with you oh, because nice. you helped me that day. Mm. So the reason was your police officer are cheap. <laughs> That's the reason I bought them. <laughs> so yeah, that was the deal. I hope you have a good day, by the way. So um, so I he just said, why is happening? And I just told him, yeah, you know what? I'm just paying. And then because people like after a long time, I was like, like Godfather in this, yeah. way, you know, everyone knew me. Scarface. Doing, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they were yeah. like calling me where is safer where we can play where is the best location oh, i actually wanted to help them i didn't want to organize uh -huh. something so what they were calling me so if there was police office we got caught, caught with them i would just they would say ah oh, do you know this guy and i would say yeah okay get the money up for him like it's safe it's okay so i was actually between police and people like artists in this right, you were the conduit so, yeah, exactly. in between yeah yeah, yeah something like but just it wasn't just police it was like besieges and so on so there were different organizations you know, the Iran, like we have a lot of uh, this kind of people. So yeah, that was a deal. And then the guy said, yeah, I guess you, what are you, you're mafia or what? When you said mafia, I was like, oh dude, I'm in, in danger. Even me as a crazy person, there was like a red alarm mm, yeah. in my mind. Like he said, like with these papers and what are the, all the scenario, you should end it somewhere like jail. And then I said like, oh, oops, okay, this is serious. And then because there was a guy with like with next to him say, yeah, with, with whom are you talking working like with Israel or that? But say, oh, okay, don't make it really big. Come on, look at me. <laughs> no, no, that was right, the time. Right. And then I told him, no, it's not a, a case and I'm just paying them and paying them off and this kind of thing. And then 
he couldn't believe it. Also, I just gave up some numbers. They say, yeah, go and check it. And so they checked them, was part of it. And they found out, yeah, okay, well, I'm just paying them. And I told him, okay, please just don't make it uh, dramatic for my life. I'm a kid. You might have a uh, kid around my right. age. Do you have it? And he actually didn't answer, but I found he has it. And I said, okay, you know what? I promise you. I promise. You get to actually speak to the judge at yeah, this yeah, point? Okay, yeah, okay. I was, I just said, I promise. Were your parents with you? or No, no, no I oh. didn't. They, didn't. they never involved with my... I was they didn't just, come when you... I didn't tell them. You did I was living alone also. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, I had my apartment. So you didn't I, tell them you were arrested this many times? No. Did, are they just finding out now if they're watching this? Uh, yes, <laughs> probably. I don't want to give them the stress. I love them. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. I will deal. They know I can handle myself. Uh, clearly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I try. I mean, maybe tomorrow... Do they know you've left happened. Iran? Or, or do they, exactly, or do they think you're just, still there? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, they know I'm out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, my mother is just always sometimes call me and say, I know you are not eating, you are not uh, doing well. I, I got, for example, eight times Corona, for example. <laughs> eight my, times? Yeah, yeah. And my mother was like, it was funny when my mother find, found out my brother, other brother, my, we are four brothers, has Corona. She was like really scared. And then. I just said, Mom, I have Corona. I said, oh, okay, take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean, he, she loved Well, you've she, got the, the history of the, yeah, the yeah. sleeping on the streets. And I mean, well, clearly yeah. you're, a, you, you're a survivor. Yeah, yeah you're okay. So yeah. I try my best. Maybe I die tomorrow, but I don't care. I, I Zabunit la, Zabunit the Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so the deal was then, the, I told him, if you free me today, because it was really tricky, complicated mm. situation. I said, you know what? I promise you, I will sign. If you free me today, because I feel it's the end, I wanted to fight, but it was an unfair fight. I couldn't fight right. like at them. They were, right. uh, don't look at it today. At that time, they were really crazy and they right. had it more power than today. So I went, I said, if you free me, I promise you, I will never ever play in the street anymore. I'm out. And then, it was like a miracle. I don't know. If somehow he just said, you promise. I said, yeah, I do. And then he said, okay, put your hand in the stump, five fingers, <laughs> and put it on and sign it. And I uh, wrote it down, and then I just signed it. Put wow. It. And then I said, okay. You do free. owe you do owe the judge. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, that's yeah. why I said, like, yeah. it's okay. He helped me that day. The judge who's part of an oppressive yeah, uh, yeah. theocratic regime. Yeah, exactly. but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. owe him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then... <laughs> So I just came um, out. I got my guitar back because it was just somewhere. They, I don't know. Where, they brought it somewhere, else, but they brought it back to me, and I got it with the amp. And I had some money in the guitar case. Mm. Immediately, I bought, a, I bought one ticket. I went to Istanbul. Mm. That was it. Because I knew also with the police, I gave up numbers and so on. I, it was but dangerous. What, can it was I just dangerous. ask, like, what, where, where was your stuff? Uh, I mean, your things, your clothes, your books. I didn't are, bring anything. I just took the guitar, amplifier, and, and one jacket done. With, with that's whatever that's I amazing yeah, yeah. that you can just pick up and, and do that. Yeah. That, that you're, you're a very... Um, Is that crazy? That's a bit crazy. Okay, thanks. That's a, but, uh, that, I mean, still not, that's still not crazy because you're <laughs> leaving to save yourself, ultimately. Right. Um, then I mean, you go and sleep in the street, and I want to hear how you become a TV presenter after a couple of weeks of sleeping in the street in Turkey, yeah, if so you can do it quickly. Of course. Yes. I was the year I was playing the street also, and it was not allowed because when I arrived, there was a bomb... Uh, explosion in the uh, Turkey they said you cannot play it was really messed up so I had to deal with it no no food I was just trying to collect food from the trash it's next to the Burger King people know when they're like if you go to Istanbul there's a Burger King sure so I was just collecting I know exactly the Burger King yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. the year I was just uh, trying to co you uh, didn't think to go to Rehun the Persian restaurant not far from there I, no <laughs> I'm, yeah <laughs> anyway. Make yourself at I home. even didn't know where is Rehun after uh, okay. the few years I found out. So, okay. but I was just trying. I mean, I had, the, I was earning some money, but yeah. I was just eating chocolate nuts for a few days. Like, that was the right. scenario. Right. Anyway, one of the days, and I found a friend in the street. I went to hostel after a few like, days, and now was it stuck in the street. So, um, I went to hostel, but one day everything changed. This is the scenario how I ended to the 
uh, become a TV star. TV, not <laughs> TV star, but uh, like I, wa- I wish I could. I was going actually. Islamic Republic again stopped me there too. Okay. The, you, I, it was Gem TV. They killed, killed Saeed Karimi yeah, on yeah. unfortunately. He was a good guy. Actually. I like how when you get serious about something, you look in the camera. I'm talking you, to them. Oh, I know. I, I'm right here. You, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. sorry. But that's good. No, I appreciate it. This is you're the TV guy. And you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's because of the Islamic Republic. You, yeah, you look yeah. at the camera. I so tell. Nice, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Most people are listening to this show, by the way, okay, and they're watching right. it. But that's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, guys. Yeah, there's a podcast as well. Yeah, yeah. Time to time, I'm looking at <laughs> the lens. So, sorry that you cannot. So, see what it. happens? How do you get discovered? Um, yeah, I went there. I, I was playing. One day was super cool. It was snowing. I, w- I went to another another area, which was just calm, and I could like hardly play. So I was playing, and there was a l- old lady. She was passing with the dog, and was snowing. Was cold. She was just passing, came to me and said, what are you doing? There is no people among <laughs> whom we are. But for ghosts, are you playing? Which what? language was she saying this uh, to you? In English. I was trying. I was learning uh-huh. English. But my English wasn't that good. But it was a rich area there. And then they, like, Modajat, they see people know where maybe where is it. So, and then she was just passing. She told me that. And then I said, I am hungry. I should pay for my hostel. I'm really like, And then she just said, okay, just go. And she put the, her hand to her uh, pocket and then she was uh, trying i guess she wanted to give me good, money uh, good money and uh-huh. no, no, i was just playing in the history i was uh-huh, a certain yeah. musician as well the old lady with the dog yeah yeah and yeah. then she just found 10 dill lucky me I, I guess she wanted to pay like 50 or something that i could pay for uh-huh. food and hostel but she was just because she was shy and say oh, sh- oh dude i do not have, I don't have money, money yeah. with me sorry and then she just gave this me this is the short version of the story by the way yeah it is where, where so, a, a woman with a dog gives or you, you invite me again i don't know <laughs> Okay, I, I, I got oh, wait, wait, wait. So fucking been here for three hours wait, trying wait, to get wait. the story out of wait, wait. you. Okay, Go ahead, yes. Okay, okay. I tell you something. I studied dramatic literature. <laughs> I guess it does Clearly. make sense now. Yes, yeah? yes, yeah. I'm telling yeah. you all the details. No, I love it. I'm enjoying yeah, it. I'm just, so I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, I was there and then I got the 10 euro, 10 bucks. I went, I was super hungry. But you know what? I was not really on the good mood. Instead of buying food, I bought a beer with the nine percent alcohol in there. I was mm. super hungry. I say, you know what? Let's die. Important information for the story. This yeah. is it. It is okay. <laughs> Why not? Because I just drunk it all. <laughs> yes. No, that's the matter. Really, believe me. Wait okay, for it. Yeah. Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. You will see it. So I drank it all. <laughs> the detail uh, is amazing. You surely. The, the, I mean, what was the relevance of the dog? You will see. Ah, <laughs> okay. oh, the dog was there. I liked it because it was cute, like a cocktail, <laughs> the hot dog or something. Actually. A woman with a dog. I don't know it's, because it's completely unnecessary. Was not, none of this was necessary. It was. Even, yes, go ahead. Yes, I wanted please. you see the picture too because it has a cute <laughs> eyes. Now you want to go to more detail. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So I was just uh, uh, there, and I drank a beer, and was like, I was hungry. Nothing in my yes. stomach. So I got super drunk. I got the first ferry. I was just going. Go, you got super drunk with just one beer. Nine percent, and I just had uh-huh. it all you in once. It. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, chucked it, and it was like very suddenly drunk. Yeah. And I was, I felt sad, but I had 10 teller left in my pocket. Mm-hmm. This is the detail, but it's important. This important. is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> exactly. It's the big payoff, the money oh, shot. Yeah. Exactly. I was just coming back mm-hmm. on the way, it, like it was super cool. And then uh, I have seen two Iranian, mm-hmm. a girl and a guy in mm-hmm. the street. Mm-hmm. It was snowing and they were uh, cool. I could see and they were playing something Iranian song, but nobody was in the Stiklada street. And I went to them and I said, what are you doing? I said exactly the same sentence uh-huh. the old lady This is me. the same day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. after the beer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I was drunk and I mm-hmm. went to them and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> nobody is passing by. You weren't drunk. No? You know, how could you be drunk only with one beer? You have to amend oh, the story. Either you had more okay, beer. Okay. Or you, yeah. I, we can try it out together. You don't eat for 24 hours and, <laughs> and I give you nine Right. on a stick in and the and snow then, yeah, yeah so you come to them and say what are you doing doing yes. there is no, nobody there's no one's here uh, yes exactly you tell us the rest <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so and then they said the same sentence as I said and yeah. they said we are hungry and we didn't pay for our, our place yes I I had 10 tele too mm. and I gave them 10 tele it's the lovely. last money yeah. I had yes and I put it there I said go get sandwich and go home and I was hungry I wanted to eat something but mm. I gave it to them I passed I went to hostel I didn't have money for hostel 
I told them, I can I just sleep in the? I sit here inside because mm. it was cold. I said, sit here, and then I a uh, few hours, like hours, and then I go out. Mm. So I was sitting there, like in one hour, one and a half hour. Mm. Suddenly there was ding. I opened it. It was uh, it was a uh, beginning of Facebook released uh, the, the new app for the messenger. So mm. I opened it, and there was a message from the guy, the, the guy from the, and girl. Oh. I gave them money. He just wrote me somewhere. You got his number? Uh, he, but he found me in Facebook. Okay. He found me in Facebook. And he just wow. said, when you left, there was a guy who was looking for someone who can play rock and blues and something like this for, yeah. uh, for a show. And I said, there, I know someone because he had seen me. I was playing in this area. I also played with him in Iran a few times. So I knew him kind of. No, the same person. You didn't say that part of the story. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I forgot. But I hmm. just, uh, I said, Shall I go <laughs> These for people that I no? knew. Uh, <laughs> then I uh, ran into some people I knew okay. and gave them $10. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a different story. But yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So, First, it was a woman and man that you've never seen before that yeah, yeah. you felt sorry for and gave the last <laughs> penny that you no, had. But the girl now I it's a guy know. who knows you from Facebook. Yeah, but yeah. go ahead, yeah. So the girl I didn't know about the guy I knew mm. a little bit. So <laughs> then the, he just sent me the address. He said, like, I told him I cannot play, but there was a guy who just passed. But he, he said, even I came b before you, but after you, uh. but I didn't find you. So he said, this is the address. This is the scenario. If you want to go, go. But Beautiful. I, man, I was like this much of beard. Oh, you don't see it. Some of you. I had lots of beard. Beard. Be beard. Yeah, yeah. Beard. Not the beard. Beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had had a beard and beard, you had yeah, a beard. Yeah. yeah. And in my blood and on my face. Yes. So, and uh, very like a really homeless, like homeless, yeah. literally yeah. A homeless. So I went, I didn't have money. It was uh, like uh, to the metro. There you was had to a, walk there. Yeah, bare, it barefoot. was really yeah, like yeah. really yes. crazy. So I ended there and then I've seen it written Jim TV. I told them I'm a rock. I can play rock and uh, whatever. And so they, they couldn't even, okay, first they couldn't believe. And they, because I was like, literally uh, homeless yes not that there's anything wrong with that. yeah yeah uh, there is not uh, nothing yes, wrong yes. but they couldn't believe, believe this that person, person will just yes, yeah yes. can't play rock or something mm -hmm. it was uh, drunk also a little bit okay i was not that drunk at the moment anyway so he said okay come in and show prove it's kind of i went there and then i wow started. on the spot yeah. they happen to be open and it, that was the reason going to do an had, audition they had musician and the guy couldn't make it on that day so this is a crazy a day show. it was a daily show right, right, yeah right. that's why they needed immediately i went there and then they i played and the mahir thomas we yeah. i hope you're watching it i love the guy so um, he just said oh he plays he can play okay get ready and I went to the show I started to play wow. when I was coming out he just gave me an envelope and I I okay I got the envelope I came out I just started to see how much he gave me and open it there was like 300 Turkish tailor that that was this this is the same day yeah mm. same day all happened in the same day mm -hmm. And I had like it's too bad you couldn't find that old woman on a Facebook, and then you could go give her some. Yeah, give yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was but something to give the dog. Exactly, yeah. a sausage, right? That's a lovely story. <laughs> yeah, the more there's a moral to that story. Yeah, don't you think? Why well, do? Yeah, it's like a the. I was like. I wouldn't. No, that's okay, like, 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 like a that's like a like a like a story like a kids book or something like you do a good deed. Yeah. And then, I mean, you have your last 10 pence or whatever you would call yeah. it and you give it away yeah. and then this happens to you. Yeah. And then you become a regular presence on Gem TV. Yeah. And then you lose that somehow. Because they killed Said Karim. Ah, I, have right. yeah, I have an idea. I have an idea. Yeah. I guess I'm talking too much. Do you want me to sing a song for your audience? No, no, we're not done yet. No, we're really? gonna, I do yeah. want you to sing. Look, he wanted that I talk. Then I want I want a couple <laughs> songs. I, I'm, okay. I'm so thrilled to have you. I'm in, enjoying this. Okay, I'm, me too. I'm, I'm having Thank fun. You. But I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing story. Yeah. It's an amazing story. And with a lot of detail. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that I didn't anticipate. That's why I wanted yeah. to make yeah, it yeah. nicer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's now tomorrow. We've yeah. been here for at least. Uh, <laughs> it's a, Sorry. So, um, you eventually move. I, I'm not going to get into all the details. Yeah. You meet a woman. You know you want to leave Turkey. Okay. You go to Germany. Want, okay. um, uh, I mean, if there's anything of that escape you want to, yeah, I will escape. Uh, yes, um, now you've been living in Germany. Yeah, and you make a living. 
playing music, yes? No, I can, I'm working in the... You, you, you make food as well. You're yeah, a chef. Uh, right now, yeah. I, I have done a lot of things in my life. So mm. that's why I'm not afraid. If you live in the desert, I know how to survive. I believe it. Yeah, I, I do believe it. I mean, that's a, it's, I, an, it's I, amazing. I, I clean the toilets. I was working in the construction. I, wa I can't even hear it. You take it down. Tomorrow I set it up for you. I was mm. working in the studio. I did a lot. I am a cook. I can uh, repair the, uh, lots of things. And so, yeah. But you I say know, you're I'm, crazy. Do you, would somebody want you to work for them? I mean, crazy. I guess you... I'm not gonna what I, we're, we're mash on the my head to the wall. I, I wouldn't uh -huh. do that. Yeah. So you're a responsible type of crazy. Yeah. You turn up for work. No, I'm you, taking like uh, crazy risks. Ah, uh, you take crazy risks. Yeah. Uh, you told me that um, you're when you got here to, to Toronto, you said you're not loving. I wanted to ask you about politics a little bit, All right. not too much. We don't All have right. to go there, but you know, it's election time in America. There's yes. a lot going on. A lot of people yeah, are talking yeah. about it, and and. You you you're not that happy in Germany in Berlin, partly for political reasons, yes. right? And you said something interesting to me, which is you said that um, um, you think the worst the worst thing that's going on in the world right now is wokeism. Yeah. So um, one of them. Yeah, I would say yeah, it's top which one. is which is super sort of progressive virtue signaling, yeah. you know watch your pronouns make sure that you support the things that you're supposed to support or you get canceled like this type of thing right yeah, yeah, yeah. um why do you think that's the worst thing in the world right now because we um because they put the liberalism mask in on their face do you do you, you cannot get cack. who is it vocism that's a dangerous part when we come, I mean, I, I, there is no detail. I know about it a lot, but I don't want to go. But the deal is, they they do a lot, but they have still the capitalism mask on their face, uh -huh. ca like a liberalism mask in their face, so they can hide themselves. The problem is, who is they? Who are we talking about? Communist people, for example. Communists. Communists, okay. like or or anyone, you know, uh -huh. like even this book, people today beginning was amazing. Like feminism uh -huh. was amazing. The first, the second, I love it. It was. I am very feminist. It's gone too far. For exactly, you. it's going too far. Yeah. But with wokeism is dangerous. It's getting dangerous. I mean, it is already G give dangerous. Give us a, what's an example. Uh, the problem is like you can literally, like, be a wolf and hide yourself. To like a, I don't know sheep. Mm, sheep's clothing. <laughs> but what, what what's like an example of wokeism gone too far for you? Uh, but this is this is like what I'm saying because they hide themselves. Well, you said that a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, wolf I eyes. I get the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sheep's clothing, but but what are they doing? What are they advocating that you don't like? For example, I mean, this is the dangerous part. I don't know. Maybe my English doesn't mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> help me to just explain yeah. what I exactly mean. But they are exactly like on the wave of liberalism, but they are socialism. They are changing a lot, ah. but they are very tricky people. Like, What's a policy that you disagree with? Uh, for example, as part of wokeism, I'm asking earnestly. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. know that a lot of people have different definitions of what's woke and what's not woke and all that. Uh, and I think I I know where you're the coming from. I don't disagree yeah, necessarily, but I. For example, they went to universities today. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, as far as I see, this is me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you I'm think wrong. universities are too left wing. I'm not thinking that way. Oh. They are going in this woke people, new generation. They are organizing some radicals group mm. they bring them in the like they it's like somehow they're covering a lots of radical things right now mm. and this is the problem this is the problem because wokeism is it is like liberalism actually if you tell me so everything can fit in like a liberal like when you have a liberal country for example you can be communist there you can be so, like uh, i don't know so uh, capitalist fan socialism or whatever yeah. but when you have like a social uh, i don't know country when yeah. you're there but c liberalism doesn't fit there so vogue is like that it's like a huge place you can put everything so actually they are taking advantage of this situation so that's why this new generation of wokeism are actually taking yeah a lot of advantage of a lo 
I don't know. Sorry, but I, you know, no, I no, it's I could okay. I'm, I'm still yeah. trying to get get nailed down like one thing, one policy that you that bothers you. I'm assuming, for example, you talk about campuses, like the 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 pro Palestinian movement. Is yeah. that something that you don't like? That I don't like that. You feel because you feel like what? It's not real. It's not earnest. It's not they're they're playing a role or or some of them. Uh. Some of them. We, I, I mean, as far in, but like, as far I found out, I don't want to really go to detail yes. and say what. Yes. I am for, before I go there. I am pro Israel and pro Palestine, both of them, because okay. I'm talking about the people in between right yes. now. So yeah. it's not really politics scenario. But these people are putting people's life in danger. For example, with Palestine, free like okay, free Palestine, but from whom? Islamic Republic, Hamas. Or from Israel, right. from whom? Yeah. So, but they well, they would say Israel. Ah, yeah. they would say Israel. Yeah. This is the problem. They are tricky, because a lot of people. When I'm in Germany, for example, I went ask them once, like they say, "Free, free Palestine." I said, "What? what where this name Palestine is coming from?" Mm. They don't know. They don't know even where the name of Palestine is coming from. Mm. I said, oh, "They said oh, it's Arabic." I said, "Where? Where? Wait, just show me." It's from Roman time, dude. You do, don't know you anything. You feel like people haven't done their... But this walk, walk is a new, gen, like, we walk scenario. It's organizing this kind of people. They want them. They want mm. them. They trick feminism with the same, actually, scenario. They're I'll tell you something that I've talked direction. about, yeah. that I've talked about on the show, that yeah. really, I find really hurtful. And that is the conflation of when when I completely understand whatever my politics might be. I understand somebody feeling heartsick about what's happening to Palestinian people with m m bombs in Gaza yeah, and et cetera, or even, sad, yeah. or even Lebanon. Um, but the conflation of that and some tacit or even overt support for Hamas, that Hamas now becomes, you know, that we're going to walk down the street with a Hamas flag or something like that, yeah, yeah. and that Iranians, you know, who the same people who were part of women life freedom you know yeah. don't see that this is these are proxies of the of the regime or don't seem to care about that that's very difficult for me trying to figure that part out yeah but uh, i there is a sentence i always say i wish i could say it in persian say it in persian oh okay uh, I always say all people. Okay, i said in english if i couldn't make it i would just go to Farsi i said all, all people are panjo hafti mm unless they prove it that they are not so these people you see are the same people i mean not the same age but that same would have people. supported the revolution in some yes years. that mm. this is the same people so we have them but when you talk to them they even have no any idea about what they are talking wokeism why i sometimes come to the point that uh, but we talk also mm -hmm. before the deal is they accept capitalism. Isn't it tricky for you? Like for me, it's tricky. Why? It's like you support capitalism. You get fun from government and <laughs> someone else is giving, you know, and then you invest their, that money suddenly in socialism. I don't know. So, I like, mean, where, somewhere not like, necessarily. Or capitalism. Like you can be capitalist and still be anti-racist, can't you? You can. I mean, yeah. like they kind of supporting some uh, organization at least in berlin i'm seeing it. like in berlin i'm seeing some but let's say about one place to not uh, make it yeah. I, I don't talk about the right, world i'm right, living there right. so it's really tricky there because they are getting for example money that they're getting fun and then they investigate somewhere that it's just very dangerous i would say mm. they, they bought chafir can you believe it i i found some organization one of them, uh, I don't want to name her, but it, it, she just bought a lot of chafia, like this. The kafia, uh, the, the kafia, Palestinian, yeah, Palestinian uh, scarf. shawl, yeah, yeah, scarf, to just give it to others. And where did you get it from? Probably Amazon. And she's uh, against uh, imperialism too. What the, what is this? I so sorry, what, why couldn't she buy those? Because the money's coming from the government. What's the part of that that, that you don't like? Yeah, the, you support the freedom for somebody to buy a scarf, though. So. No, they just have shared it. They shared it to uh -huh. just have it as a symbol uh -huh. in the history. But what's right wrong now, with that? You're walking. What is wrong with that? Yeah. Khamenei is using one of them. This is I wrong. See, I see. You, you, what's wrong. wrong with it is you disagree with the yeah. what it stands for. Uh -huh. Anyone yeah. I know who... But, 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 
every time I have seen someone is uh, getting punched or got killed or something in Iran, they had one of these shots. Uh -huh. This is wrong. And yeah. they are spreading it right uh, in, the, in Berlin. You're walking and everywhere like they are with this. And the, one of them said, yeah, when I see you, I'm uncomfortable because you are pro-Israel, because I was in Israel. And so you supporting Israel, I felt uncomfortable. I said, yeah. your shawl is making me uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I have seen lots of people got killed in front of my eyes with the same shawl you have. Until Khamenei, until like the guy Nasrallah, yeah. who got the, the, finally he's in hell, I guess, hopefully. If let there me, is let me ask you something. You, you, I think you, you would support, I, I, I made a joke about you being like Trump before, but you would support Trump, right? If you lived in the States, would you mm -hmm. vote for Trump? Uh, There's a lot of Iranians who would. Uh, it is good for Iran. I, the deal is uh -huh, that's what I want to ask about. For Iran, why do good. you think it's good for Iran? If Kamala Khan probably will just make a deal with Islamic Republic, like Obama, we don't want to do that. Nobody wants that. We're tired. We know Trump is not good for Iran either. Yeah. But, we, but yeah, see, I, but I agree with you on the Kamala thing. I agree yeah. that it'll be an extension of the Biden administration, yeah. which is not which has frankly been shit for Iranians yeah. in in terms of uh not really in the end yeah. uh, basically enabling the continuation yeah. of the regime and fighting for the JCPOA resuscitation yeah. etc but uh but Trump is an alternative what's what's curious about that is do we know what <laughs> what Trump would I'm, do I, I'm I, I'm genuinely I mean they say maximum pressure okay. and they, I know you know what the hope would be but what what do we actually know okay. what will happen under a Trump administration uh the deal is they won't make deal with Trump man the guy made cutlet out of Qasem Soleimani. <laughs> mm. They wouldn't make deal with this guy, right? The biggest guy. So it won't work with them. So it will be much more complicated for them to just even this little way of getting money or just, I don't know, money. You think or that he's going to be that tough on the, the regime? I, but pro, I mean, we have wish for it, but he, he, he is the one he might go to that direction more than because he Kamala, said something right? not long ago about no, we'll do a new deal with Iran. I mean, he's uh, you know, That's you never deal. know what yeah, uh, yeah. exactly is happening. That's with him. a deal, even if he wanted it, won't work. Those Kharmas habis doesn't let Islamic Republic <laughs> do that. If they make deal, it means yeah, you're making deal with the uh, uh, Qasem Soleimani's killer or what. They, they cannot, even if they make a deal, they will lose the rest of the fan. Mm. So for Islamic Republic, it's a very serious sh shit. <laughs> I didn't want to use why that. Why don't you, um, why don't you move to Orange County, California, where there's all Trump supporters and Iranians. I'm and you'll not be, Trump supporters. You'll be happy, you'll be, uh, no, I'm actually yeah. being serious though. Why, why don't you come to North America? Why don't you come to Toronto? Uh, they didn't give me visa. Isn't it time? <laughs> come, come, sleep on the street for a couple of weeks. Somebody will discover you. You'll become a TV star here. But I should enter first. I'm not sure. I could. <laughs> oh enter yeah, is, is that a, an issue? I guess that is. I right? guess right now, no. I, it might be not because I, I would went love to Israel. To, we, we would love to have you here. Yeah, I, I actually for now I'm slowly, slowly trying like getting more logical person uh, going and start in America is kind of tough right now mm. uh, with the situation I don't know what's going on there right now you're getting we older want. you're no longer the crazy person yeah, exactly. we used to okay. love yeah. no I can't do it with those crazy <laughs> stuff but the deal is uh, here I guess I can make it slowly slowly better I'm alone I probably. have to apologize to you For what? because I respect you a great deal as a musician and as a songwriter, and I've led the conversation into all kinds of places because I just think you have an incredible story. Yeah, thanks, and I wanted no, to ask no you a bit about politics. We didn't even get into Taylor Swift and how you hate Taylor Swift because she's woke. Uh, uh, I hope she is not woke, but I feel she is. <laughs> she is. Wait, and, like the that's two crossing the line. Two minutes after <laughs> Kamala's, I guess uh, Kamala is the best one. What, uh, re really? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Give us some reason for it. If you do not well, have she, the reason. Well, she actually wrote some reasons in that uh, yeah, but, Instagram but, post. Or exactly. But, uh, there wasn't enough for you. You want to. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> as Trump said, like he uh, was t telling to George Biden, say, the board is blowing up, <laughs> man, like Joe. <laughs> 
<laughs> like what yeah. is your like w- w- what is it exactly w- about what you're talking about i mean she's a very a special musician i i respect <laughs> her. Yeah. i do believe that she's really good i do good. believe I like she it. really is yeah. but if you want to enter this kind of situation with this m- right. amount you of you would follower, prefer she keep her politics to herself exactly what are you doing even with yourself if you are woke Please let us but know. But did you see the? Did you see every time I yeah. Well, forget it. We won't. Yeah, well, go, you yeah. say, say no, it. No, I, I mean because well, but, yeah, but so. here's the thing. Yeah. I actually, I I try my best to not be. I I, I try to be a nuanced thinker. Yeah. And as a journalist, I have never told anybody who I vote for, you know. And I try and listen to different sides and all of that, you know. And I see I see some of the. I actually see some of the places that the Trump um, folks are coming from and things like that, and right. I understand the, the other side. But, you know, when they had the rally the other day and the guy's making jokes about, well, not Trump, but the, they had a comedian or yeah, something yeah. making jokes about Puerto Rico is a piece of garbage in the sea and things like that. Yeah. It really turns me off. I think, like, c- come on. Like, I, that that shit, I, we, you know, do we really have to... Because if you're going to make fun of Puerto Ricans... And and Latinos and Black people, we're part. We're, we're next, you know. Yeah. The Iranians like that. That just that that type of. Uh, I didn't really think it was funny, and I thought it's unnecessary. And like the sort of racial baiting to get votes and stuff. I, I, that part I don't get. I'm not. You mean uh, the the guy the comedy and yeah, like Trump's yeah. yeah. But yeah, look, if for example I have a friend, yeah, he plays uh, terribly guitar and sing very bad, yeah. Uh, and is my friend. Yeah. And you're going to put him on your Madison Square Garden show? Yeah, he ha- but, does he have to play at the Madison Square Garden show? You put it on me or what? If you if you put him on your show and say, yeah, I'm really glad to have this guy here. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I I just didn't understand what the point yeah, of but that I, is. But I mean, he just said, I would just after come and say, okay, the guy did wrong. Yeah. I, I thought he would make it. Yeah. But he did Well, they're it. trying to I say mean, that. Trump, now, but, Trump, yeah, yeah, Trump also did it. Yeah, but some people are crazy. I mean, the guy can <laughs> yeah. the guy can be woke either. This is actually, he just, you think he didn't know this will happen? I guess he knew the consequence. So these are very tricky in the scenario. Mm. I wouldn't judge well, them. It's that's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't really go ju- judge it with the scenario. Maybe the guy had this idea in his mind, but he doesn't have the power actually to do anything with it. Where so. do you, what's, you, you've been writing. You have some new songs. Yeah. I'm really uh, touched that you, you didn't even, you didn't come from Germany with a guitar. No. You've borrowed a guitar. From who? An expensive guitar. Exactly. You have to be very careful with this guitar. Very much. You're not on the streets of, you're not on Estaklal Street anymore. No, it's a serious guitar from Baba (laughs) Kamini. It's his signature. You have borrowed his guitar and you're going to play us a song or two. I tell you something funny. I was coming out and I said like, because I said, can I borrow a guitar brother from you? And he said, yeah, take it. Take it, that one, my signature. (laughs) That lovely is he. And I'm with a very expensive handmade guitar right now, which is his signature. Actually, you should see his new signature, which is Babak Amini Farbahar model. Hmm. Wow, man. Philip Konda made it, and it's wow. I will send you some picture. Maybe you can He's put it He's a big on fan of yours. He thinks you're great. He told me he thinks you're great. He's l- he said, "I you got to interview this guy. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't want to. Please don't make me. And he said, no, you have to. His big brother who is supporting the <laughs> little smaller brother. You have song. a new song or yeah. relatively the, the, a song that you wrote called Automesh. Automesh. It's yeah. so beautiful. Thanks. Man. It reminds me a bit of a Faramayz Aslani song. Yeah. Is that okay to say that? Of course, I love him. He encouraged me. I was like, when I was a kid, I, w- I was listening to his voice all the time. One of the reasons I'm playing guitar is Farah Zeslani. I keep also, there is uh, Enrico Macias as well. But him, I mean, who was playing guitar? I mean, a lot right, of people right, were ter- right. started to play guitar because of him. Well, yeah. and with your beautiful voice. Will you play that song for us? Yes, for sure. All right. Yeah, thanks. Adavone Hatemi. Adavon. It means helper. And ha- how do I say your last name? Hatemi. Hatemi. Yeah. It's like Hatemi. Unfortunately. 
Yeah. <laughs> and even, I'm just making sure I know but, for the pronunciation. But I tell you something funny. Yeah, yeah. My name is Erdogan. In Turkey, they say Erdogan. I say like, dude, you mess up. You have all Ar- the old world leaders yeah. covered. Yeah. Erdogan Khatemi. Ha- yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Go play our best for Thanks, us. Yeah, Thanks for being here, brother. For sure. Thanks to you. All right. Erdogan Khatemi. Uh, uh, going to perform the song Automesh in our Rook Hub space. Very special to have him here. Take, take it away, brother. Aramesham ra dar avvali shab tu hediye dadi Amma be pel ki doz didian ra ari tu khabi اشکم اسیدی به گونه هایم بارانیم بارانیم من آری تو لبخندت بزن و ساده و دریاییم من انصاف دل نیست تنها سلامیست تنها کلامیست بی کس و کارم من پر دردم زیبا نگاهی آری گناهم گرما گرفتن از گرمی توست بی رحمی اما ویرانگری ویرانگری تو انصاف دل نیست تنها سلامی تنها کلامی بی کس و کارم من پر دردم زیبا نگاهی آری گناهم گرما گرفتن از گرمی توست بی رحمی اما ویران گری so the crazy guy there he is he's back (laughs) hello beautifully done thanks man beautifully done thank you so much that was that was really really wonderful so it's wonderful to have you here. It's one to tell us a bit about that yeah, song because you have a good heart, I guess. It's I, not that I, good, right? I, it, yes, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all capitalism. That's the only reason I love we it. have you. I love it. Uh, uh, so. tell, tell, tell us about yeah. Aramesh. About Aramesh, uh, not with detail, right? Not please, not please, <laughs> just a, a very few details okay, um, because there was a dog there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So the deal is, um, Aramesh, oh, uh, I. I found a friend once like by chance I was just talking with a guy and he said I have a lyric you're a musician would you just make it for me and uh, something like that I said yeah why not his name was Mukhtar and he was a very lovely guy and he showed me his uh, lyric and I said oh okay I will just this is my my number we had each other's number and then I went home and I made this melody for it and I didn't find him ever I have this lyric Wow. Yeah. I you still haven't found him? No. I hope it, now he yeah, says, uh, yeah. Mukhtar, anywhere you are, just write me. Wow. Yeah, I made the song. <laughs> you could have just lied and said that you know, when nobody would have known. You said that this is yeah, my song. But, you know, why should I? No, the me- melody is mine. Yes, I wrote it the, for him the, to the just. poetry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, d- I want to find him. The guy was so Mukhtar. lovely. Mukhtar, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you are listening to us. Turkhuda, Mukhtar. Yeah, call Come. me, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. You can go and <laughs> record in the studio. But right now, I played it for you. <laughs> hey, thanks again for being here. Thanks I hope it's the first of many. Me. You're a, a brother. I really appreciate you. Man, I, I, what should I say now? I, traditionally, I you say something nice back. Love you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you thanks for that lot. forced confession. No, this is <laughs> such a pleasure. I said, I, I'm happy. I know you, man. I know what you have done. I am a lucky guy. You see how I found good people in this world. Ah, there you see. Famous people. Beautiful. Me, the woman and the dog, and handsome. the Tabrizi <laughs> judge, all yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you.
Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks to Ardaban Hatemi for being here in our studio here in Toronto. And uh, that beautiful song you just played, we actually recorded two more songs that will be available on our Instagram and on our YouTube. Uh, in case you're listening to us on the podcast platforms, audio only, check out our Instagram and YouTube to see more of his performances in the coming days. This is Full Time for Rook, episode 344. Big thanks to the amazing team who put this show together. Super Parisa, Smart Pega, Sep wonder savvy roham tina the photo and video queen and special thanks to bearded omid talented anahita methodical cave and solid samin thank you to all of you out there for supporting supporting us and sharing our content do subscribe still after these four years if you haven't subscribed please do so and you can do so on any or all of our platforms find me on instagram at gian gomeshi and as ever mizun bashin 